welcome to Woodwork for Humans, the series where we get you woodworking right now. And of course, I do a lot of content about plants, how to get them set up, how to optimize them, and how to prep your wood by hand. And recently, I've gotten a lot of comments from viewers who have said, okay, I've restored a plane, I've sharpened a plane, all that's fine, but when I actually go to plane wood, I'm not getting the kind of results that I see on your channel. I'm not getting these beautiful feathery shavings and these shiny surfaces. I can sharpen the thing, but I'm not totally sure how to use it. And that's a really good point. I haven't covered that very well. So I thought I'll just do a video about planing, but then I also thought, well, I've been doing hand tool woodworking for a long time. Anything I do is still gonna look too easy. It's not gonna be helpful. What I thought was, I need somebody else to come in here, somebody who's not an experienced woodworker, and I'll show them learning how to plane, and that'll actually help you get better. Who am I gonna get? Well, I already have somebody who works with me. He does the editing for my videos and he wants to learn woodworking even though he doesn't know much about it. I, I think I just heard him come in. Hey, Nate, Nate, yeah. can, can you come here? Of course. So he's, he's gonna come and, and he'll be part of the video today. So here he is. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? I'm, I'm great. Hey. I'm, I, well, um, you've, you made some interesting uh, uh, fashion choices there today. Yeah, I just wanted to be ready. <laughs> um, was it, is this bad for shop work? No, no, it's it's fine. Was 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 there anything that that, that made you choose that exact ensemble? Uh, not really. Just looked kind of tough and ready to go. Is it, is that weird? No, not at all. Okay, so uh, Nate, who's totally not dressed in a weird way at all, is gonna be our guinea pig for this planing experiment. What I have here is just a regular old vintage Stanley hand plane that I bought from a flea market and I restored. I have videos on all of that stuff. And then I've also taken the iron and I've sharpened it. I've got a whole video that goes through sharpening in detail and I've set the cap iron very close to the edge, about a 32nd of an inch away from the edge. That's a standard setting for me. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take my iron and put it in my plane. I'm gonna take my lever cap and lock that down and then I'm not gonna do anything to it. I'm gonna hand it to Nate and then for the rest of this video, I'm not gonna touch that plane no matter what. He's only gonna follow my verbal instructions. You ready, Nate? Absolutely. Okay, so first thing you wanna do is just look at the mouth of the plane, flip it over and look at the mouth. Is the iron sticking out at all? Uh, not really. No, good, okay, so what you want is for it not to be sticking out. What I usually do is I spin that adjustment knob counterclockwise and make sure the iron is all the way up in the plane mm -hmm. and nothing's sticking out. If you run your thumb over the mouth, do you get anything? Nope. Okay, fantastic. Go ahead and put the plane, we've got a scrap of wood right here. This is just a little thin scrap of walnut. This is really useful for setting your plane up. We'll put this in the vise. You can put your plane on that and then take a couple of strokes just the way it is. Yep. All okay. good. Great. So this is the way that you want to start out. You want no iron sticking out of your plane. Now what Nate is going to do is he's going to keep planing the scrap of wood while slowly spinning that knob clockwise and advancing a little bit of iron. Go ahead. Great. Okay, let's see what we got. What actually came out of the plane? That would be this shaving right here. <laughs> okay. So, if you get something like this out of the plane early on, that's great. That's an excellent sign. Uh, now, it looks to me like this was kind of more towards the side of the iron than the middle. Where was it actually coming out of the mouth of the plane? Was it in the middle? Uh, I believe so, yeah. Okay, so let's try to take a shaving right in the middle, the whole length of the board. Great. And that's great, that's an excellent shaving. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the plane back on the board again and we're gonna shift it all the way to one side. So you wanna be all the way to the left or all the way to the right, your choice. So we're gonna go all the way to the right to yeah. start with. And then go ahead and try to take a shave and see what happens. Oh, that felt much better. Did you get a shaving? Oh yeah. Okay, so what we want is to not get a shaving oh. on the edges. So if you got a shaving here, on the left side, I'm willing to bet that if you go to the right side, you won't get anything. Okay. Go ahead and try that. Yeah, nothing. Okay, so what that means is that the iron is not straight 
inside the plane. It's definitely tilted much more to the left than to the right. Now I'm not going to touch Nate's plane, but I do have another plane here, and I'm going to use this to demonstrate what's going on. Back behind the iron, we have the lateral adjustment lever, and that gets the iron to be straight in the plane. What you want to do is move the lateral lever towards the part of the iron that you have too much of. Okay. So right now, you have too much iron on the left, yeah. so move it to the left. Okay. And what you're going to do is you're not going to plane in the middle anymore. You're going to plane on the left and then on the right, and we're going to fiddle with the lateral until we have the exact same amount of iron on the left and on the right. Okay, so what you're looking for is either nothing on either side or very, very little, and you want it to be even no matter what. Okay, so now Nate is going to take a shaving on the left side of the plane. Very little. Tiny bit of shaving. Now he's going to take a shaving on the right side of the plane. Also very little. Also very little. Do they feel equal to you? They do. Okay, now take a shaving down the middle of the board. How does that feel? That felt good. It felt good. Now a great thing to do is take your plane and start a shaving on this side and as you go across the board, move the plane over. So you start off on the left side and by the end of the stroke, you're on the right side. Okay. Does that make sense? So you're starting over here. Yeah. And then as you go, you're slowly moving it sideways until you end up over there. Okay. So try taking a stroke that way. Great. And what you're looking to do there is watch and make sure that the shaving starts coming out at the same place and stops coming out at the same place on the other side. Okay. Does it look like it's coming out evenly and the blade is cutting evenly all the way across? Yeah. It does. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Fantastic. Now the next thing you can do is you can take your plane and you can hold it up to the light and you can sight down it like this. Some people do it from the toe, some people do it from the heel. I find they're both effective, especially if you have something sort of bright and reflective back here. And what you want to see is just a little bit of iron sticking up right here in the middle. Yeah. And, and you don't want any iron in either corner. If you have iron sticking up in either corner or in both corners, you're going to get tracks in your wood. It's not going to work well as a smoothing plane. So at this point, Nate's plane is totally set up. He's got the iron sticking out just a little bit, and he doesn't have it sticking out at all at the corner. So there's only a bit of iron in the middle. That's an ideal smoothing plane setup. That means we can get rid of this little test board. I keep something like this right under my bench, and every time I sharpen a plane or get out a new plane, I put a thin board like that in the vise and run through a couple of strokes just to make sure I know the iron is situated properly. Then I can move on to doing my actual work. In this case, I'm going to give Nate this piece of walnut. This is a good polite board, the grain is going straight, so there's not going to be any reversing grain or any weirdness, and the edge of the board is rough, so it's a great thing to practice on. Edge planing is the perfect way to start off because you're only using the center of the blade anyway. You've got less to worry about and you can concentrate on getting a nice straight and even surface, and then later we can move on to the more challenging face grain. Go ahead and just put your plane right on here and take a couple of strokes. Okay, let me just time out real quick. One thing that you're doing is you're starting about a quarter of the way in on the board. Yeah. Which means you're not cutting the whole board. Right. Okay, so what you need to do, common beginner mistake, is you need to start with your blade off the board. Okay. So come over, time out for a second, come over, rest the toe of the plane, and that's just the part that's ahead of the blade, rest that on the board and make sure it's nice and steady. Make sure you've got it registered. Then push forward and take a stroke. Okay, time out. So let's take a look at what you're doing there, and I think this is exactly what we want to be seeing. This is what happens when you have your smoothing plane set up. Yeah, go ahead, do yours too. This is what happens when your smoothing plane is set up with the right projection with the corners up inside the plane, you get a nice feathery shaving like this, and the surface of the board is really clean and shiny. Even though it's narrow, you can see this on camera. This is what you're looking for, and if you're new to planing, doing the edge of a narrow board, an easy wood like walnut, 
that's a great way to get started. Now the next thing we need to do is figure out if this board, now that it's all cleaned up, is it square? So at this point, Nate's got his board. <laughs> he's got his board and he's taken all the rough wood off one edge. It's nice and smooth, but we need to know whether it's square or not. So he's gonna take his tri-square, he's gonna put the stock of the square against one face of the board, that's pretty flat, and he's gonna lower it so that the beam of the square touches the edge. Then he'll hold it up to the light and see if any light is sticking out underneath the beam of that square. Oh, for sure. So there's, there's a lot. This is a normal result. The first board you edge plane will almost certainly not be square. What is going on with this board? What does the square tell you? There's a lot of light coming through on this edge. Okay, so that tells us we're very low on the left side and we're high on the right side. We're gonna put the board back in the vise and plane to correct that. We've got the board back in the vise. This side is low and this side is high. And we can correct that with our plane. This is a smoothing plane and it's sharpened with a curved or cambered edge. That means we have much more iron in the middle and less iron to either side. Where we wanna correct the board, we're gonna shift that high middle part of the iron so we're taking off more material. So what Nate's gonna do is he's gonna put his plane on the board and he's gonna put the middle of the plane all the way over on this right side. And then if he just takes a stroke that way, the plane's gonna go back and forth all over the board and he's not gonna get a consistent result. So here's where you need a little extra technique. You take your left hand and you grip the toe of the plane, just like this, and you're using this knuckle of this finger as a fence to ride against the board. So you're gonna have the plane like this, and as you're going down the board this way, your knuckle is gonna keep the plane oriented left to right. You're gonna keep the center of the plane over that high section, and take a couple of strokes that way. So what we're getting here is exactly what we wanna see. Instead of getting a full width shaving like this one, we're getting a narrow shaving. That's great. That tells us that we're only taking a shaving off the edge of the board. And I just thought of another trick. Hold on just a second. You can just grab any pencil or pen and draw a zigzag line all the way down your board. And that gives you a really quick visual reference for where you've planed and where you haven't. Okay, so that was five or six strokes. Just looking at the board and looking at your shavings, what's happening? There's pencil left on this side, no pencil on this side. And are your shavings getting wider? They sure are. <laughs> so we're taking more and more of a shaving as we work our way across the board, leveling it out. Let's do four or five more strokes. Okay, so now we've taken about 10 strokes over the board. Let's see what our shaving looks like. So now we're back. This is just like the shaving we had when we started. We're back to having a full width shaving. That means we're doing the whole board. Now's a great time. Don't even take out any instruments or anything. Just get down on the end and sight along the board. Your eyes can tell you so much. What does the board look like when you just look at it? It's looking much more flat along the edge. Okay, great. So now we'll take it out and we'll check it with the tri-square again. And what do you see this time? This time, I have more light coming through on the right side. So does it look uh, flatter, or does it look like you just changed the problem to the other side of the board? It looks like I kind of just changed the problem. <laughs> it's a completely normal thing. It totally happens. We'll go back to taking some more shavings, and we'll correct that. So what happened there, this is a common thing, is we took all the strokes with the plane with more iron over on the left side. And what we ended up doing was taking too much wood off the left side. This is why we're doing it with a volunteer instead of me doing it. If I were just doing this, I would have unconsciously shifted the plane back to the middle towards the end of my planing, and that would have evened things out. So what we're gonna do this time is we're gonna take a few strokes just on the high side, then we're gonna shift the plane over to the middle and take a few strokes with the full width of the iron, and that should give us a much more even result. And again, you can see that Nate's just getting these narrow shavings again. He's only working on the right side of the board. Now go ahead and move your plane, so maybe another quarter inch of it. Not all the way dead center, but closer to center. 
good. Now the shaving is getting much wider. Now we're gonna shift the plane over to the center of the board and take a couple of strokes with the plane in the center. And even here, I would still use that fence technique so the plane isn't moving back and forth. Okay, now's a great time to go ahead and color your board in again. And this is not a beginner's technique. I do this all the time with my planning. It's much easier if you can see what's working and what's not. Go ahead. How'd that go? That was fantastic. You just took off all the pencil in one stroke. Yeah. I have a great feeling about this. Let's take this to the tri-square and see how we're doing. All right, I'm getting a little, I'm a little low on the right side of the edge, but as I go forward, it evens out. And yeah, it's even at this end of the edge as well. Okay, so what Nate is demonstrating here is that you have to check several places along your board to figure out what's going on. There's no guarantee that what you have on the end close to you is gonna be the entire board. You said you're a little high on the right side here, and the rest of it is good. So what would you do to correct that? I suppose just take maybe one or two small strokes along here. You just do a little bit of work where the board is still high, and that would probably correct the whole thing. So I would take one or two little shavings off this edge, then one full shaving off the whole edge, try it again, but you're probably good. And once you've done this a few times, you'll be able to plane an edge, try it, and fix anything very quickly, much faster than we're showing here. Okay, so with edge planing figured out, we've taken this board and put it flat in the vise, and we're gonna work our way across the face. What Nate's gonna do is put his plane so that the center of the plane is right here on the edge, and he'll take his first stroke, and then he's gonna move over by thirds. Each time he moves over, he's gonna move over a third of his stroke until he gets all the way across the board. You ready? Absolutely. Okay, fantastic. Let's take a look at what's going on here. We can already see the planing gave us a nice shimmery surface. It's really bright. There are some dull spots, and this means the wood is probably a little bit low right here, and the plane isn't catching it yet. We can also see some sort of nicks along this edge, and this suggests another really common beginner issue, which is that the blade isn't quite engaging right at the front there. It's skipping just a second, and then it's engaging with the wood. In general, this is what it should look like after one pass. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Now, let's try to work through some of these issues. To get rid of some of these problems you have starting the iron right here in the cut, we're gonna skew that plane a little bit. Okay. Now, you're not gonna push straight. You're still gonna push along the board, but you have the plane. That's probably even too much skew. You could pull that back a little bit. Go ahead and go across the board again, but this time with a bit of skew. Okay, that was fantastic, but I remembered one thing that we could add. So this is just a can with a rag and some oil in it. We're gonna rub that on the bottom of the plane because metal planes need a little bit of lubrication. Now, go across it again the exact same way. Okay, so now this is much more what we're looking for. You can see that the shimmer in the board is really even, and we don't have those dead spots. Now you might see it's a little dull over here, but what's happening here is we have a little bit of reversing grain. There's probably a knot in the wood over here somewhere. You can see those rising lines, and this part might have to be sanded or scraped later on. It might not plane perfectly. And then if we go to look at our shavings, these are the sort of shavings that we're looking for. They're a good width, and more importantly, they're thick in the middle, but right at the edges, they're kind of ragged looking. They're dissolving away to sort of nothing. And that means the camber of the iron is doing its job. It's pulling the corners up away so that we're we'll only get a shaving in the middle and we're not gonna get any tracks on our board. And when we go to look at our board, we don't see any tracks and more importantly, it feels perfectly smooth to the touch. Okay, so now we've learned how to plane face grain of a board that's already been sort of surfaced by a machine. But here's a piece of rough sawn lumber. And the next thing you wanna learn how to do, once you've worked on a piece that's been machine prepped, is try to get a rougher surface like this and then prep that down to something that's smooth and ready for joinery or finishing.
So when you have a rough piece of wood like this, the important thing to do is to get a cut where you're taking off a lot of wood, but not working too hard. So Nate's retracted his iron all the way again. He's going to put it on the board and he's going to start planing. And then as he goes, he's going to start increasing the iron until it starts to bite down. How's that feel? That feels really good. Okay, so now you're just going to go at this board and take off all of these rough marks. All right. So we've been down here in the shop learning how to plane for about an hour. And this is essentially the first hour that Nate has ever spent planning. So how difficult was it? It was not difficult at all. It was easier than you expected? Absolutely. So what part of the process was surprising or unexpected to you? That there was a curve in the blade and that you needed to be aware of where you were using the plane. Oh, so the center of the blade has more curvature and mm -hmm. takes a deeper cut, and then it should kind of fade away to nothing at the edges yep. so you don't get tracks. That is a really important thing that I feel like most people don't understand is that most plain irons, especially smoothing plain irons, are cambered. They have a little curvature to that. We cover that in our sharpening video. We'll link to that down in the description. So you've had a really small amount of experience doing this now. If I gave you a rough sawn piece of lumber and a sharp plane, do you feel like you'd have a decent chance of taking that by yourself and prepping it for a project. Oh, absolutely. And if somebody was getting started in this, should they be intimidated by learning to plane? Absolutely not. <laughs> I'm glad that you think that it's easy. And hey, listen, if you're interested in planing and topics like this, you might even want to make your own planes. For instance, we have a bundle of plans. It's our specialty plane bundle, and it teaches you how to make planes like these. Or these. Oh my God, four, do they get four planes in that bundle, Nate? Nope, they get five. Five planes? That's crazy. Is it that is. all they get? No, they also get a special plan. What? A bonus project? I know. And how much does it cost? It's only ten bucks. Ten bucks! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we realized that was corny, but plan sales are one of the things that supports this channel. And if you're interested in learning how to do things like make your own planes and spoke shaves, go on over to rexkruger.com slash store and check out our specialty plane bundle and the individual plans we have for all of our plans. If you liked having Nate in this video, go ahead and check out his new YouTube channel. We'll put it on the screen right here. And of course, we always have to thank our patrons on Patreon, because more than anything else, patronage is what makes this channel possible. If you'd like to be part of one of these amazing communities of craftsmen, go on over to patreon.com slash and check out all the rewards, early access, and extras that we have only for the people who make this possible. Thanks so much to Nate for being on camera for the first time, and thank you so much for watching.